Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. Quick video for you, a uh, little bit of a follow up on the Shear Center videos that we made before. I know they're pretty popular on our channel, so um, we did get a lot of questions as to why are we dividing when we find the forces F1 and F2 by 2. And I got a lot of questions like that, many questions. So, um, so I'm going to do my best to explain a little bit of this concept to you. We're not going to go into the like the long integration derivation of it, but I'm just going to explain the idea. And it's just going to be a really quick, uh, hopefully, a quick clarification uh, on this question. Okay, so uh, what we have is we have tau A, the, the st uh, shearing stress at point A, and we have the shearing stress, the maximum shearing stress at point B. Okay, so that's what we found. We, uh, if you're not sure how we did that, go back to the other question. Uh, there's a step-by-step -step process for that. Okay, and we have a force of 12 kip here uh, causing a rotation, and we have F1 and F2 balancing that rotation. Cool, and we have this shear flow which is acting in the opposite direction of the force that is being applied. So what we have, okay, when we have a shearing force, or we have a we have an eccentricity here of E. Okay, what we have here is a shear stress distribution on the flange, okay? So what you need to remember, okay, is that the shear stress distribution on the flange here is going to be a linear one with the, the maximum stress, or the maximum which is at the center of the web here, being tau max or tau A. Okay, so we have a shearing stress distribution here with tau A being 833 PSI. Now for the web, as you'll see in this question, we have a force F3 here. And this force F3 is going to, in fact, um, create a parabolic distribution of stress on the web with the maximum, and I know that's a little messy, but you get the point. Uh, at tau B here, the maximum shear stress is 583, and at this point, it is 833, exactly what it was at point A. Cool, so how do we find ta uh, F1? So we know that F1 is tau average, okay? Average times area, okay? And the area of the flange here, we went over that in the other question. Okay, so the average stress here, okay, is simply the maximum shear stress divided by two because it's a triangular loading. Okay, so we have 833, okay, times the area, which is five, and the thickness is one half inch. Okay, so we have times one half, that's the thickness, T, times the length. So this is the area, and that is the, uh, the shear stress, and then we just have to divide that by two, okay? So that is essentially what we're doing for there. So uh, we took the maximum shear stress, we divided it by two, and then we multiplied by the area of the flange, okay? So that's going to give us, and it, we actually have to multiply by one over a thousand because this is uh, PSI here, and um, we want to just get our answer in kips, so we're gonna divide by a thousand. And our final answer is going to be that F1 is equal to 1.0416 kip. Very good. Let's take a look at F3 here. Okay, so if we take a look at F3, all right, now actually we have tau A, okay? So tau here is actually the, the entire area under this stress diagram, okay? So that's going to, and then that's going to be multiplied by the area of the web. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have two portions. We have this rectangular portion times this distance. So we have 833 times 18 and that's going to be times one half, right? The thickness of this. So don't mistake this half for the one that we did here. This half is the thickness of the web times the length of the web times 833. And we're going to add that to this para parabolic area here. Okay? The parabolic area is going to be the peak here. So we have 1583 minus 833. Okay, and that is going to be multiplied by two over three because that's how we find the area of a parabola of this shape. And that is also going to be multiplied by the area of the flat of the web. So the area of the web again is 18 times one half inch thickness, and that is going to give us F3 of 11.997, which is equal to roughly 12 kip. And as you'll see, once we take the sum of the forces in Y, uh, we have this 12 kip force acting down, and we have F3 acting up and that's going to be equal to zero, which is a good check. That is pretty much it. One more question that I received is, do we take the moment about B? When we take the moment about B, do we take uh, this distance from F1 to the neutral axis, or do we take this whole distance here? 
And actually, we do take the whole distance. So let me just show you what we're going to do to finish this question, okay? Is we're going to uh, take the moment about point B, all right? We're going to multiply P times the eccentricity, okay? And that's going to be counterclockwise. And then we have this couple moment here of F1 and F2, okay? So we're going to multiply, for in this case, F1, okay? And that's going to be multiplied by the entire height, okay? Which is going to be H, okay? So that's the formula. So we're multiplying actually this entire distance. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that clarified something for you, at least from that video. I did get a bunch of questions. Um, if this isn't clear or, you know, you think uh, I, I mentioned something that's incorrect here, feel free to post down in the comments below. Let me know if this helped you. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.